You look like you saw a ghost. There are ghosts in this house, you know. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 stars you forgot were on the X Files. So we gotta kick some butt. We gotta kick some butt. For this list, we'll be looking at notable names in Hollywood you may not have realized had a cameo or full role in this cult sci-fi show. Do you have a favorite episode of this paranormal program? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Seth Green, Deep Throat. Okay, don't shoot. Stay right there. He didn't do anything. It was 1993, and people hadn't yet learned that the truth is out there. Mulder and Scully hadn't been partners very long when they took on a mysterious case about a test pilot. What reason would the military have to kidnap one of their own pilots? That's the $64,000 question, Scully. While investigating nearby UFO sightings, they meet Emil, played by a very young Seth Green. Seth's character plays a big part in this episode, as he fills our dynamic duo in about the aircraft in the area and even helps get them onto the base where the planes launch from. It's a long way from the likes of Family Guy and Austin Powers, but a pleasant surprise, especially from such an early season. Oh man. Did we tell him about the landmines and junk? Hey! Number nine, David Alan Greer, Hollywood AD. What's Taya Leone's shoulder made of? Uh, craft service, what is Taya Leone's shoulder made of? Turkey, just like you asked for. When David Duchovny directed this episode, it felt like he picked up the phone and called a whole bunch of people he had worked with just to have some extra names in the cast that week. Minnie Driver, Taya Leone and Gary Shandling all appeared along with David Alan Greer in the same episode. Once you meet the people that are going to play you. Gary Shandling, Taya Leone, this is Agents Mulder and hey. Scully. Nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet it's you. It's a pleasure. Big fan. Driver and Greer both serve as members of the audience at the premiere of the movie based on Mulder and Scully. Both had recently co-starred with Duchovny in the movie Return to Me. Leone, Duchovny's wife at the time, and Shandling played the fictional versions of Scully and Mulder, respectively. I love you, Scully. No ifs, ands, or... B. Mm. Where? Wait, Mulder, I can't. Number eight, Lucy Liu, Hell Money. From Charlie's Angels to Kill Bill, Lucy Liu has made quite a name for herself when it comes to action and adventure films. However, when you dig into her filmography, we find her name splashed across many notable television programs. Home Improvement, ER, LA Law, and even Beverly Hills 90210 were some of her early credits. In 1996, she appeared in a season three episode of The X-Files called Hell Money. Mama, yeah. She played a sick daughter of a man trying to gamble his way into paying for her treatments. A relative unknown at the time, it wouldn't be long before this Asian American actress would become a Hollywood heavyweight. And now I'm fear that my father has done something illegal, that he made a mistake and something bad is coming. Number seven, Jack Black. DPO. Zero, do you mind if we talk for a minute? No, four. I'm with the FBI. All right. Long before instructing at the School of Rock or swinging through the jungle in Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle, Jack Black was helping his friend harness his newfound superpowers. In the season 3 episode, DPO, Black plays an arcade owner named Zero, who's best friends with Giovanni Ribisi's character, Darren Oswald. I'm thinking we should go somewhere. 
get out of this hole, maybe check out Las Vegas. You could do some serious damage someplace like that. Oswald gets struck by lightning and can now control electricity, to which Zero helps keep under wraps. Although the episode focuses more on Oswald's powers, Black's character gets plenty of screen time, including a fantastic death scene in the latter half of the episode. Number 6. Luke Wilson – Bad Blood His resume may list countless films, but Luke Wilson's first television role was in a vampire-themed episode of The X-Files. Basically, I think that we're looking for someone who has seen one too many Bela Lugosi movies. He believes he is a vampire, therefore he… They act like one, yeah, yeah. This season 5 gem gave us two completely different versions of Wilson's Sheriff Hartwell. Scully's account gives us a straight and level local sheriff, whereas Mulder's tale shows him more as a backward hick to whom Scully has a crush on. Ooh, boy. Y'all must be the government people. I'm Lucius Hartwell. Wilson nails both portrayals, giving audiences the perfect amount of comedy an episode like this deserves. We love how his character brings out the laughs from someone like Scully, who typically is so straight and narrow. No exam has been done? No, sir, this is just like we found him in a motel room, as is. No exam has been done? Uh. Number 5. Lucy Lawless Nothing important happened today. What you're saying is absurd. Is it? No more absurd than I am. I am a first generation prototype. Shortly after Xena Warrior Princess had been cancelled, the production team from The X Files reached out to Lucy Lawless. She was cast as Shannon McMahon, one of several genetically created super soldiers, which became a main theme of the initial final season. You know what I am. I'm the product of 50 years of military science. An older Marine friend of John Doggett, she plays a vital role in the exposition of the entire Super Soldier program. Appearing in the two-part premiere episode, her character was expected to be reoccurring throughout the final year of the show. You didn't trust me. Those plans were cut short, however, when Lawless became pregnant later in the season. Number 4. Lily Tomlin – How the Ghosts Stole Christmas Considered season 6's least expensive episode, it also featured two major names in Hollywood, Lily Tomlin and Ed Asner. When's the last time we actually haunted anyone? When was the last time we had a good double murder? Not since the house was condemned. This is embarrassing. Amateur <sighs> kid stuff. Tomlin had approached the show years prior about appearing in an episode. Creator Chris Carter eventually wrote this story with her in mind to play the role of Lida. Let's see, where is it? No, 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 no. Asner was cast as her husband, Maurice, after Bob Newhart turned the role down. Together, they appear as a couple of ghosts taunting Mulder and Scully who have become trapped inside a so-called haunted house. Oh, Scully. That's us. An incredible bustle episode, both Tomlin and Asna bring comedy and a touch of the creeps to our favourite FBI agent's Christmas. Number 3. Octavia Spencer – Millennium Mr. Black? Yeah? You've got a phone call? I think it might be your daughter. Thank you. She won a Golden Globe, a Screen Actors Guild Award and an Academy Award for her role in 2011's The Help. And for someone whose first role in film came in 1996, her filmography in both television and movies is quite extensive. 
1999, she appeared on The X-Files as Nurse Octavia, who worked in a mental institution. Investigate them. Keep a low profile. I think I know where to start. The facility was notable, as fans would meet famed profiler Frank Black, who would go on to have his own spin-off series, Millennium. Unlike others on this list, Spencer's role was limited to a single line of dialogue that could easily be missed. Be sure to look out for her when Frank decides to leave the hospital. Octavia, I'm gonna check myself out. You'd like a day pass? I won't be coming back. Number two, Brian Cranston, Drive. How about if uh, we just pull over and let me out too, huh? I must be cramping your style. You just sh shut up. What do the actors who played Walter White and Jesse Pinkman have in common other than Breaking Bad? Well, they both appeared on The X-Files. Die-hard fans probably know the story of how Vince Gilligan met Brian Cranston on set during Gilligan's days as a writer. He was fantastic. He had everything we needed. He was scary. He was a fantastic dramatic actor, and yet he had some, some humanity. Cranston played Patrick Crump, a man who suffers from a condition which induces horrific pain when he's not moving at a certain velocity. This speed-inspired episode helped Cranston land the gig as Albuquerque's most notorious meth dealer years later. Is this what happened to your wife? The same thing? If you stop moving, you die? I think I saw this movie. Cranston's co-star Aaron Paul would also appear on the show later on in season 9. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Tony Shalhoub, soft light. At least he didn't pump into any men in black. My shadow isn't mine. It's... It's like a black hole. It splits molecules into component atoms. Jane Lynch, Lord of the Flies. She's the mother of a very special boy. Where are you going? To school. I know where you're going. Well, what did Ellie want? You stay away from her, Dylan. She's no good for you. She's only going to get you into trouble. Peter Boyle, Clyde Brookman's final repose. In an Emmy-winning role, he played the prognosticator Clyde Brookman. The body was face down. If you didn't move it, how did you know the eyes had been removed? Well, they had been, hadn't they? Then what are you complaining about? Reese Darby, Mulder and Scully meet the were-monster. He's a lizard who turned into a man. Ah. Oh. But the medicine he gave me didn't cure me. It just clouded my thoughts. And as a result, I, I did something insane. You attacked and killed someone. No, I got a puppy. I named him Dagoo. Dagoo! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Ryan Reynolds, Scissor G. Going all the way back to 1996, Ryan Reynolds appeared in a season three episode of The X-Files called Syzygy. And we had some good times. Good times that I'll never forget. He was on screen for less than three minutes before becoming Mulder and Scully's Victim of the Week. At only 19 years old, Reynolds played a jock named Jay Boom De Boom, who gets seduced and murdered by two young women. So did you hear who the cult is supposed to be coming after next? A blonde virgin. It's hard to imagine Reynolds ever being that young, but it's even more entertaining to see how G-rated his dialogue is compared to what we've seen since. It's a role that helped push his career forward and gave us the Reynolds we know and love today. Anyway, I got places to be, a face to fix, and oh, bad guys to kill. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.